Good morning, and welcome to online worship. We're very happy to have all of you joining us this morning. Um, and I know some of you may be watching us um, on the recording uh, on Sunday afternoon. And uh, so we welcome you as well to worship with us here. Um, I know it's been a tough week and a lot of things have changed. Just imagine a week ago we were uh, here in worship together, a few of us not knowing exactly what was going on, and, um, but a little afraid and a little apprehensive. And, and unfortunately, things have just gotten more apprehensive and, uh, and, and more anxiety ridden. And so I hope that you can take this time together, this hour or so that we spend together this morning, and, and set aside all of that. Um, forget about what's going on in the world around us um, and just, uh, just to let the, the Lord's presence fill you this morning and um, give you a sense of calm and of strength. That is what we are here today. This is Sabbath, a chance and a time to spend with God and with one another. So welcome to worship. We're going to begin with some singing. Okay, we have a couple of gathering songs. The first one will be Lord Speak to Me from the hymnal, number 463, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. verses 1 through 3.
in time of trouble, worry, and anxiety. Lord, hear, hear our prayers. You hear our cries. You surround us with your love. Lord, comfort us. Though we find ourselves in different locations this morning, Lord, we are the body of Christ. So I wanted to just remind you that um, in a little while we will have um, joys and concerns. And there will be a couple of different ways that you can share in that time. One of them is to use the chat feature on uh, Zoom meetings. Um, this may be altogether different to you. I know Zoom is, I've used it so many times this week that I'm becoming familiar with it. But for many of you, this is the first or second time that you have used it. But there is a, a, a button, and it depends whether you're using a phone or a computer um, or a tablet or an iPad. There, It's in a different place. Sometimes there's a button that says more, and if you click on that, it will appear. But you can use that feature and type in uh, a message that we will get and then can relay and share in our prayers and concerns. An easier way might be to be, uh, if you're a part of our Facebook group for our church, Ramona UMC community, then you can um, use that time, use that place. There is a post there that says joys and concerns and you can post your joys and concerns in that location. We seem to be having a technical issue. Oh, wait. Well then, now let's sing again. And we'll sing in the hymnal number 529, verses one, three, and five.
and comforts thine. I know my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost home, while to the rock I'm clinging, since love is born of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, with everything that has changed in the last couple of weeks. One thing that has not is that we are still on our sermon series. And so we are in the fourth week of our series called Fishing Lessons. And so I wanted to, as part of that, share another fishing story. This story is of three pastors who went out in a, in a boat to go fishing in a lake. And they weren't too far from the shore, uh, but they were a, a good distance. And um, as they were fishing along all day long, uh, about lunchtime, uh, one of the pastors said, I think it's, it's time for lunch. And he got out of the boat and he walked across the water to the shore and grabbed the, the lunches and did the same thing. He walked back across the water, got back in the boat and, and handed everybody their lunch. A little while later, the, uh, another one of the pastors um, said, you know, I'm out of bait. And he too got out of the boat 
walked across the water, got more bait from the shore, and came back and got into the boat. And at this point, the, the third pastor was just looking at the other two in complete awe and wonder, figuring out how did they do this. But he didn't want to let them know that he didn't know how because they knew how. And he thought he'd just sound kind of stupid if he asked any questions about it. And so he looked around and said, you know what, I need to go uh, onto shore as well. And he got out of the boat, stepped onto the water, and sank straight to the bottom. And while he was under the water, one of the pastors looked at the other and said, should we tell him where the stones are? <laughs> Our story today is, is an amazing story, if you think about it. In, in many ways, here we are, the, the, the disciples have left the shore, leaving Jesus behind. Jesus often took time on his own to go into the mountains, into the wilderness, and to pray. And so they left Jesus there to do that, and they got into a boat heading over uh, across the sea to their next um, destination. And they thought that Jesus would come in a boat and follow them the next day. But then suddenly in the middle of the night, they saw what they thought was a ghost coming across the water. No boat, just a man walking. And when they, they got over their fear of Peter, of course, being the brave one, if not the, the mm -hmm. reckless one, said to Jesus, said to the, to the person out there, who are you? And Jesus says, it is I. I have come to be with you. And Peter said, Jesus, if you can walk on water, then I can walk on water too. And Jesus, and Jesus, you know, you would expect Jesus to go, no, that's, that's reserved for me. I am God's son. But Jesus didn't say that at all. He said, Peter, come on out. And just like the first two pastors in the boat, Peter got out and, and lo and behold, he was able to walk on the water. Amazing things happen. But then Peter got distracted. Peter noticed that the waves were whipping a little bit and the, water and the wind and, and all of it started to surround him and he started to, to pay attention to everything going on around him and he began to sink. And as he began to sink, he cried out to Jesus, please help me, Lord, help me. And Jesus said, no way, you're on your own. No, wait a minute, that isn't what Jesus said, is it? <laughs> Jesus said, Jesus came to him, grabbed his arm and pulled him up, gave him a little bit of admonishing, but still, could you turn that down? That's so distracting. So, um, sorry, I'm hearing myself echoing back in the back. So Jesus pulled him out of the water and rescued him just as he does for each one of us when we cry out to God for help. If there was ever a time that we could take a lesson from Peter, it is today, right? We all today find ourselves in the midst of, of storms and, and wind and, and waves that we didn't expect. And we too are crying out to the Lord to help us. But I want to point out a difference between this story and last week's story. In last week's story, you remember, they were on a boat as well, and Jesus was sleeping, and a big storm came, and Jesus got, woke, they woke him up, and Jesus says, why are you bothering? And he just sort of snapped his fingers, and the storm all went away. And there are times in our lives where that happens. I have heard miracle stories many times throughout my life. Stories of people who have been diagnosed with illnesses and suddenly they come back to the doctor and it's all gone. But I think more often our lives represent this story. Because if you notice in this story, Jesus didn't suddenly make the wind and the rain go away so that Peter could focus. He simply reached out and saved Peter from in the midst of the storm. Because it is 
most of our experience is that the storm continues to rage even as we pray for it to stop. And our lesson today is that Jesus is there even in the midst of those storms, reaching out to us and grabbing us as we begin to sink into the depths of anxiety and fear if we only call out to Jesus. There is a, uh, a, common, the- a common genre within Roman theater. But this is you know, thousands of years ago. Um, It's called Ex Deo Machina. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's the machine of God. And uh, the playwrights, I guess, in the Roman times weren't very good um, because they would create these plays where, you know, like our modern comedy, everybody gets all confused and, you know, lots of misunderstandings. And at the end of the play, instead of some kind of clever way of it all working out, they would literally have a person that they would lower in a machine, a, a little cart on a, on a rope. They would lower them down and it would be God. <laughs> and God in this machine would just point at everybody and says, you, you are supposed to be with them, go with them. And you, you're supposed to be with them, go with them. <laughs> and would just suddenly come down at the end of the play and in the last five minutes fix it all. And everything was hunky-dory. And that's more of a description of last week's sermon, isn't it? But not of what we normally experience and, and not what we are experiencing today. Because we can, we are prayed for this virus and this pandemic to go away, but it, it's not going to just go away. It's going to take all of our efforts together, is it not? It's going to take us doing this stay at home order and trying to keep our distance. It's going to take us, uh, our governments working together, and that alone may need more of our prayer than anything else, so that we can focus our efforts um, to contain this and hopefully minimize its effects on us. So in the midst of this storm, Jesus is with us. And that gives us this opportunity, allows us to survive. But it does more than that. Because as Peter was standing in the boat, Jesus, and wanted to come out into the water, Jesus said, come on out, right? We can focus on how Peter turned away and you know, got distracted and began to sink. But what's amazing about this story is that for a moment or two, Peter was able to walk on the water. When he kept his focus, when he stayed focused, on God, on Jesus. He was able to walk on water. So as we pray and connect with God, it's not just a a way of surviving this storm. It's a way of thriving in whatever storm we find ourselves in. It's a way that amazing things can happen even in the darkest times. And just think about what we have done in this past week. Just, uh, you know, I've been so busy on the computer just trying to find ways to connect us together, but we have now a Facebook group where we can all receive messages and talk to one another on a daily basis. And 40 out out of the 70 of us who come to worship on a regular basis are already in that Facebook group. That that didn't even exist a week ago. We've had opportunities to come online and to chat with one another. The the two practice sessions I had on Zoom, uh, I'm going to continue to have those just to give people an opportunity to talk to others as we are home isolating ourselves. And this entire live stream, last week, or two weeks ago, I would have told you, now live streaming, that's, that's not really going to work out. It's, it's a little bit too complicated. There's lots of problems, lots of things. To, and here we are, a week later. In the midst of this storm, amazing things have happened. And we may have the opportunity then to live stream even after this time is over. Because I know there are some of you out there who are unable to come to worship with us. 
And I am so excited that we can include you here in this lifetime all together. Amazing things. We don't just survive, we thrive when we stay focused on God. What amazing things is Jesus calling you to? Jesus is calling you to get out of the boat. Not get out of your home, maybe, but make sure you keep that social distancing for the time being. But what amazing things in the midst of all of this, what amazing things is God calling you to? We'll only know if we stay focused on Jesus. If we take time, especially today, right? Today, Sunday is a Sabbath day. And usually we have so many things that we can go do on a Sunday, but many of those things are closed. So it might just be the opportunity today to really think about Sabbath in the traditional sense of disconnecting from the busyness of life. And, and I would suggest that that is disconnecting from all the news. Take time today, disconnect from the news and reconnect to God. Take time to disconnect from the busyness and the worry and the anxiety and reconnect with God, with your family, reconnect with your neighbors. You can wave, give them a phone call, send them an email. Reconnect with one another, especially in this time of social distancing. But just think, there are many in our congregation and in our community who self-isolate every day of the week and every week of the year. Use this moment to realize how they feel, how disconnected they must feel all the time. And with that knowledge, let's go out and do amazing things. I'm looking forward to hearing what amazing things we can do. I hope that you'll let me know or talk on the Facebook group and tell us what amazing things are happening in the midst of this time. Don't get distracted with the ever-changing news stories, with the hype that comes trying to keep us watching the news all the time. Step away, disconnect, and instead stay focused on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now we'll sing another hymn from our hymnal, number 368, My Hope is Built, verses 1 through 3.
now we come to a time of sharing our joys and concerns. Uh, for all those in the travel industry who, um, who have to deal with both a shortage of people um, and also the dealing with the worries and concerns of, of all those travelers together. For all of them, we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, we actually changed the sign on the, on the church this week to say thank you to our healthcare workers who, um, who are putting themselves on the front lines um, to help uh, people in all sorts of conditions, but especially uh, those who may come in um, thinking they have um, COVID-19 or actually um, having it and being treated for that. So a big prayer of, of care and of guidance, um, of peace in the midst of this anxious time. We say for them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So for all of those who are facing um, um, financial hardship or just financial uncertainties, we wonder whether uh, as the weeks, if, as this progresses for two or three weeks, whether we'll have a job or not. We pray for, for all of those who are in that situation. We pray for answers. We, we hope that God is at work in those in government who are coming up with answers and help along the way. For all of them, we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For everyone affected who are in isolation, um, that they may feel God's presence and, and that we may somehow figure out ways, new ways and exciting ways, amazing ways to reach out and to connect with one another. We should be doing that all the time, right? We are the body of Christ, but especially in this time, we want to figure out ways to, con to safely connect with one another and help us all to realize that we are not alone, that God is with each and every one of us. And together we indeed are, as I said, the body of Christ. For all of that, we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. Can I add one? Oh. Sorry. I'd like to add one more prayer. Uh, I'd like to just lift up the people working in grocery stores, restaurants, gas stations, we are depending on them so much right now and they have to leave their home isolation and come out to work so that we can all eat and have gas <laughs> and all those other services that we often take for granted. So I uh, just really like to lift them up right now. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day um, in how we, we think of healthcare workers as those emergency workers and but you don't often think about that person running the gas station in the same way, but they truly are now. They truly are heroes and, and people that are, that are going above and beyond so that we can continue to, to survive and to work and, to, and to, to move about. We thank all those people, grocery store workers and those in the pharmacies and drug stores and um, all those essential workers that we often, as, as, uh, as Deborah said so, so well, we often forget about and don't even notice. They are doing amazing things. So for all of them, we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right. Well, let us lift up these joys and concerns to God as we join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for being present with us wherever we find ourselves this morning. We know that there is nowhere we can go that you are not. 
And we know that even though we worship scattered across this city and across this state and across the country, that you are with us. And though physically we may be apart, we are together the body of Christ. We ask you to especially be present with those whom we've lifted up here this morning. For those who are sick and, and have illnesses and who are hurt, we ask you to reach out and embrace them. Hold them close to your side that they may feel your warmth, your comfort, and your care. For those who are working and those who are, are planning and guiding and trying to figure out how best to guide us through the situation, we ask you to guide them, to inspire them, to lead them, to strengthen them. And help us to remember that in the midst of storms, if we stay focused on you, we can do amazing things, not simply survive, but thrive. Help us to remember all of this. As we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You should be receiving a knock on the door now as Terry goes from house to house to... Oh no, that was plan A or C or no. Obviously we are separated, but um, we, we do want to let you know that there are still ways that you can support our ministers, especially in this time. Um, the electric company and the water company and everything else, they're going to continue to bill us. Um, so if you are... if you are looking for a way to continue your support of our ministries or if you would like to do it for a first time. Um, you can see on the screen now that there is an address www.ramonaumc.org slash give and you will find there um, a, a few different ways that you can support our church um, including simply clicking on a link there and and, uh, and filling out a, a small form to use uh, some form of payment there to, to give money to our church. We appreciate um, any financial help that you can give. We all know that we are, many are struggling. We've been helping, um, as you can imagine, a slightly larger number of people who have called the office um, and made appointments to come in and get food out of our pantry. And we also help them with um, gift cards um, in this time. And of course, especially in this time, have been very, um, thankful for that opportunity. So we appreciate um, any help that you can give us in, in this time. We are also today celebrating UMCOR Sunday. UMCOR is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Um, they um, go around from uh, place to place all around the world. Um, as I often tell people, they were here um, in um, and during in 03 and 02 um, and different times to help with the fires. Um, they've been here last year as we had uh, fires in this area and in Northern California. Um, and what happens really is that they only have five people on their staff. And so they help 
with training and, and, uh, and moving finances, as we support Amcor, they help allocate finances. But the people on the ground are our own people. I myself and Jennifer are trained as, um, uh, as United Methodist Volunteers in Mission. Um, and we have already been at work. You may not realize this, but UMCOR is already at work in San Diego helping with this crisis. And as people were coming off of the cruises um, when they've been allowed to come in, um, people I actually know, um, and people you may know as, as well, Judy um, and Judy Lewis and Carl Ports, have been there handing out um, uh, um, health kits with hygiene products. So as they go from the cruise into, um, into isolation, they have a, a, a kit there to help them with some necessary hygiene, soap and, and different things like that that they may not have been able to take with them from the cruise ship. So UMCOR is already at work um, here and in many other places helping with this crisis. And this Sunday is our, our, a special Sunday for us um, where we lift up UMCOR. And, and it was just this Sunday anyway, right? So there are actually two, and I'm sorry I'm going on a little bit too long about this, but there are actually two things going on today. And uh, it's just how it works and unfortunate uh, in, the, in the timing of it. UMCOR Sunday is actually the day that we receive funds for UMCOM's administrative cost. Because when you donate money to a cause for UMCOR, say we donate money to, to disasters in the United States, 100% of that money goes to those disasters in the United States. They are able to do that because, one, there's only five of them, um, and so, and they have one office, and so it's, it's very low administrative costs. But we take this one Sunday out of the year to raise money to cover that administrative cost so that all the money we give the rest of the year goes 100% to whatever cause. So you really have two options today, and both are valid. If you want to give to UMCOR Sunday, and that's administrative cost for, for United Methodist Community on Relief, please put UMCOR Sunday um, in the comments if you're going to give online or on the memo on a check if you want to mail in a check. Um, so that we know UMCOR Sunday funds will go to their administrative costs to help them continue to operate. If you want to give now or at any point for, the rec for help here in this community, then you can put UMCOR, just UMCOR or UMCOR um, US or UMCOR relief or UMCOR emergency response, something so we know that you specifically want it um, to go for the, to the people here in this community who need it. Um, after this week, all UMCOR, anything marked UMCOR will go to relief. So this specific Sunday and this week from now till next Sunday uh, is an opportunity for us if we want to collect money for their administrative and that's why I wanted to take a few minutes and talk at this time in our offering, is just to, to remind, to, to tell you all about that and what they're doing. It seems surreal to be in the midst of receiving help from them at the same time as asking to help them. Um, but that is surreal is how we describe many of the things happening um, in, in this past week and probably will describe many of the things happening in the weeks to come. So. With that in mind, I'm going to ask you all to join with me in our offering prayer. Gracious and loving God, in the midst of wind and waves, we thank you for your continued and unwavering presence. Help us to see you and to focus our attention toward you rather than the rattling of the wind and the splash of the waves. For your presence and example, we are eternally grateful, and in return, we offer the gifts that have been given this week to your glory. Bless these gifts in your name. Amen. Amen. Now we'll sing number hymn, hymn number 2158 in our faithly sing book.
thank you all for being here with us. If I, I have no idea what you experienced on, on that end of the camera um, and whether things went in and out or if you had trouble with the signal. Uh, but I did want to remind you that I'll be taking, we had cameras here also recording, and I'll be putting that together um, all afternoon and have um, sometime late this afternoon or early evening uh, a more edited version of today's worship service available on YouTube and on our website um, so that you can, if you'd like to watch it again at that point, um, if you missed part of it or something, um, it'll be there for you. So, but I want to thank all of you coming. And we, we didn't get a chance to say one of the things that we always say. Um, I'll remember it next week. And that is, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. So, go forth. Go forth into your day with God's light shining on the path before you. With Jesus present and with you, beside you guiding you as a friend, and with the Holy Spirit working within you. Let it surround you and fill you with God's peace and hope, love, and strength, each and every moment of each and every day. Amen. Amen.